This game is a work of fiction, and its author's imagination. It does not aim to offend, insult, or discriminate anyone on religious, social, economical, species, or any other basis. Any violation of the player's aesthetic sensitivity, active citizenship, or any other spiritual impulse lies on their conscience. Any resemblance of the characters to your real or imaginary friends, neighbors, colleagues, tulpas, is entirely coincidental. All the heroines are of 18 years old and have confirmed their consent on participating in this game. In written form, an expert from the screenwriter's medical history could be provided on demand. This game does not contain any propaganda of voluntary or not ending one's life. Not a single mascot, animal, or human was hurt in the creation of this game. Happy reading. How's it going? It's my name is Linkwood, and welcome back to Everlasting Summer. In the last episode, we completed the prologue. Now today is officially day one, I believe. Bright daylight struck my eyes. At first, I didn't pay attention, as I wasn't fully awake yet. On their own, my legs carried me towards the door. Damn. Looks like I fell asleep and missed my stop. Simeon? Simeon? Simeon. But there was no door. I looked around the bus and realized that it wasn't a good old worn laz. Instead, the bus was an Icarus model. A new one. I froze in shock. I mean, if it's Icarus, wouldn't you burn? <laughs> How? What? Uh, am I dead? Have I been kidnapped? No, I'm, I must be dead. I patted myself down feverishly, slapped myself painfully in the face a few times, banged my forehead on the back of one of the bus seats. It's clear, either I'm still alive or you can still feel pain when you're dead. But how could this happen? Maybe I slept for too long and ended up at the bus depot? And then what? Did they put me onto another bus? I rushed out and took a look around. Greenery wherever I looked, tall grass on the roadside, trees, flowers. Summer! But, but how? It was winter just a moment ago. My head was aching unbearably, as if it was going to explode. Slowly, I began to remember. Don't know what's happening. Bright colors, bright colors. No long road, running off into the distance. Forests, plains, fields, lakes, and forest again. I think I was sleeping, but then how can I remember all of it? And then a gap. Some girl leaning over me. She softly whispered something into my ear, then a gap again. What? <laughs> and, and then I woke up here. Who was that strange girl? Or was she just a dream? For some reason, thinking about her made me feel better and calm me down a little. I felt warmth all over, coming from the inside. Could it be her who brought me here? Then. I need to find her, and the best place to look for her is away from here. I rushed to the left, then to the right, and stopped, hesitating over where to go. Finally, I ran in the direction from which the bus had probably came. Transformers, what is happening? Physical exercise does refresh one's mind. Thoughts become clearer, and it gets a little easier to evaluate the surrounding reality. Not in my case, however. I was sitting on the roadside, wheezing and trying to ease my sore throat by gasping breaths of hot air. In any case, the run did its job. The fear withdrew for a while. Maybe I really am just dreaming? Though recalling myself on the bus, I immediately rejected the idea. I am neither dreaming nor dead. I know a road ran through the field and far into the distance. That exact same road from my dream. It must be very far from home and it's not just that it was winter yesterday and it's summer now it's the whole environment of course summer is usually like this green and hot but here everything is not entirely lifelike everything looks like it was taken from paintings of Russian of Russian landscape artists of the 19th century 
The grass is just too lush. The brushes are not like what bushes should be. They are so thick that you can't see anything through them. Like treetops, honestly. In the trees themselves, the forest was quite far away, but the trees looked as if they had closed their ranks and were now just waiting for the order to advance onto the fields and plains. I caught my breath and looked at the bush. I looked at the bus, which was now barely visible. That was a good run. Fear overtook me again. Those power lines. There must be people here. But what does it mean? In fact, that means nothing at all. Could they have power lines even in hell? Roasting sinners over hot coals? That's so last century. I must have reached a point of no return, after which you should either lose your mind completely or finally try not to understand what's going on. And well, I still have a choice. I should pick the second option. I slowly headed back to the bus. Of course, it was scary. But I'm not likely to find an answer in the fields or the woods. And this wretched bucket of bolts is the only kind of link that I have with the real, real world. I should carefully scout the area. Sovuk means olet. Sovyok. Sovyok. A brick wall and its gates crowned with Sovyok. Signs, statues of pioneers standing on the other side, and a road sign nearby showing the bus route number 410. The trip's taking a bit too long today. I smirked. A person may start acting inappropriately in extreme situations. Something like this is probably going to happen to me now. This place didn't look abandoned at all. No rust on the gates, no damage to the walls. Sauvignon. No, don't go up your cat. What are you doing? Don't interrupt my recording. What do you think? What, what's wrong with you? What well, could have a name like that? Judging by the pioneer statue, it could be a kid's summer camp. Moreover, it appears to be open. Of course, the simplest explanation, logically speaking, explains nothing at all. The strange girl, the altered bus, summer, the pioneer camp. Thousands of theories went through my mind instantly, from alien abduction to lethargic sleep from hallucination to a time and space shift none was worse than any other but there was really no way to pick a single one then it occurred to me I can try to make a phone call I took out my cell phone and dialed the first number from my contact list but instead of signal strength bars the screen was showing a thick cross alright that means no signal in such a remote place Though, I cannot be the only one who came here. Buses don't drive themselves. Or do they? I explained the bus. I examined the bus from all sides to make sure that this wasn't hallucination. Bits of dirt in the bottom, some rust here and there, faded paint, and worn on tires. No, this is definitely a very ordinary Icarus. Yeah, exactly the same kind of bus which, I ta which takes you to places beyond your understanding if you carelessly fall asleep. I gave a nervous chuckle. It came out by itself. Sporadically. Because this wasn't the right place or time to laugh. But where on earth is the driver? I cautiously sat down on the curbside. Is it? I don't. Is that? I don't think it's how you spell curb. Beside the bus and started to wait. My patience didn't last long. The anxiety seemed to have reached its peak, and I started to go slightly mad. In such a situation, anyone would have probably felt something similar. Aliens' parallel universes were gone from my imagination, leaving only void and darkness. Is this how everything will end? How my life will end? But I wanted to do so much. There were so many things that I had no time for yet. I was overwhelmed by the idea. This was definitely the end. But why? It's not fair! Should I'm... Surely I'm no worse than anyone else. God, Why? Tears were, burning, tears, tears were burning my eyes unbearably. I curled up and started rolling in the grass. Why? What did I do? Why me? But my cries were only heard to the speech of statues of the pioneers and a bird on a tree, which immediately flapped its wing and took off, crying out something in its own bird language as if laughing at the idiot who dared to interrupt its after-dinner nap. I was left breathless from weeping and just lay quietly, sobbing occasionally. 
After a while, I managed to pull myself together. My mind cleared up a bit, as if terror and the fear of death gave me a little break. All in all, someone wanted to kill me. What is all this for? It doesn't look like an experiment either. If this was just some crazy coincidence, then there's probably no threat. Anyway, for now, it seems there's no danger. The panic was soon gone. Of course, the blood was still pounding in my temples and my hands were still shaking. But at least I could think clearly now. Right now, there is nothing I can really change anyway. So no matter how much I think or how mad I get, it only makes things worse. Until some actual facts appear, there's really no point in making guesses. In any case, I won't learn anything by lounging around here. This camp, if of course it really is a camp, looks like the only place where people could be. So I decided to go there and hardly had I reached the gates when we found out it's Auschwitz. It's actually Mecha Hitler. He Mecha Hitler. Mecha Hitler. He brought me in and gassed me. The end of the game. Calling it. A girl came up from behind them. I like her hair. Wearing a pioneer uniform. My logic didn't let me down this time. Then again, a pioneer uniform in the 21st century. And then again, a girl here. I fear I was unable to take a step. I feel very much like running away. Running as far away as I could from this place. Far from the, this bus, gate, statues, and far from this bloody bird with, it, with its siesta. Just running, free like the wind, faster and faster, waving to the planets passing by, winking at the galaxies. Running, b becoming a pulsar, a pulsar ray, and turning into vestigial radiation. Running to face the unknown. Run no matter where, as long as it's far away from this place. Meanwhile, the girl came closer and, and smiled. I could not help but notice her beardy, even though I was trembling with fear. Human instincts work independent of consciousness, and while only 5% of the brain is responsible for cogn cognitive processes, the remaining 95% are still are always busy sustaining life, and in particular, ensuring stable functioning of the hormonal system. I desperately waited to get less complicated and start thinking in formal quotes from an encyclopedia, though my thoughts appeared one by one, being stupid out of this place, as if taken from an in internal monologue of the hero of some junky soft cover crime fiction book. A pretty slavic face, long braids that looked too, like two armfuls of fresh hay, and blue eyes you couldn't drown in. Hi, you must have just arrived? Supply, uh, yeah. Alright then, welcome! She smiled broadly. Strange, it looked as if I had just a normal girl in front of me. Bah, I shouldn't have returned here. The woods and fields seemed better. But what shall I do next? Try to speak with her as if she was human or run away or what? Blood was pumping unbearably in my head, tearing it apart from the inside. A little bit more and the poor pioneer girl would have splattered with the gruesome contents of my skull. What's so funny about that? The girl looked me over. It sent shivers down my spine and my knees started to tremble. No, nothing. Great then. Great. What was so great about that? Suddenly, a thought crossed my mind. To hell with it all. Forget that the bus was behind me, the fact that it was winter yesterday and summer today. I wanted to rip myself out of this itchy sweater, 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 and just accept that all of this is actually happening. Everything is as it should be. All this is for the best. Would you happen to know? You should go to our camp leader. She'll tell you everything. Look. You go straight ahead to the square, then turn left. You'll see several small cabins. She pointed at the gates, as if I knew what was behind them. The is a picture, is a patronomic, a derivative of a person's father's name in the case Dmitri, put by Russians after the person's name as a sign of respect or formal address. Well. You can ask someone where Olga Dmitrievna's Dmitri Evna's cabin is. I, erm... Um, got it? Of course I didn't. Well, I've got to go now. The girl waved her hand at me and disappeared through the gates. It seemed as if her... 
as if to her, I was something ordinary. And all this show for the bus and the travels while awake or asleep or troubling only to me. Well, everything here is just the way it was supposed to be. Camp leader. Pioneer uniform. What are they doing, a historical reenactment here? I hope I wouldn't find Lenin standing atop an armored car in this square. But even that would not not surprise me right now. After standing alone for a while, I headed into the camp. Uh, we'll find out what is in the camp in the next episode. So hope you have a great day and be I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you all next time. Have a good one. This game, I love it. It's cool. I like doing voices. I like her voice. I like every voice. And I like your voice. And I hope you do too. And I hope you can learn to enjoy it if you don't. Can I outro is that? <laughs> she called me Mr. Bombastic. Silly fantastic. Touch me on me box. She says I'm Mr. Ro. Ro. Monty. Call me fantastic. Touch me on me box. She says I'm Mr. Ro. Smooth. Just like a silk, soft and cuddly, hug me up like a quilt. I'm a lyrical lover.